Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Welcome back to the channel and welcome today to a first look and full overview of the new Lamborghini Urus, the car that is right behind me. We're behind the scenes ahead of the UK launch, but we're going to take a look at the first super sport SUV, the fastest SUV out there. We'll have a look all around the outside, jump onto the interior. We'll hear it start as well, so stay tuned. But let's get started taking a look at the new off-roading Lambo. To kick us off, let's run over some of the highlight features and details and take a walk around of the car before we delve into more detail, check out the interior and even here it's starting up. So this is a Giallo Alger car that we're looking at right now. It's the third member of Lamborghini's lineup alongside the Huracan and the Aventador. But of course, one significant difference in that it is a four wheel drive, four door or five door, including the rear hatch SUV. So they're very keen to stress that it's pure Lamborghini DNA so the design, performance, driving dynamics and driving emotion that you expect in a Lamborghini. It's a super sport SUV as I've referred to. By that it references the top speed 305 kilometers an hour, 189 miles per hour. That makes it the fastest SUV available even though it's not actually the first SUV that Lamborghini have made. You might be familiar with the LM002 of which a few hundred were made. Very much a military focused vehicle 30 years or so ago this is a little bit different. This is aiming at a much larger market and potentially it will be their highest selling vehicle when deliveries start later on this year. So to go into more detail, things I like about this car initially, things that stand out, I'm going to come straight to the headlights. You have the distinct styling, in fact the entire car has distinct styling that we're familiar with from other Lamborghini models. Those Y shapes inside the LEDs, that also continues around the rear and the tail lights as well if we come back here. We'll take more of a look at the styling as well, just some highlights for the moment. Something else I particularly like, the door, uh, the frameless door windows. So when the doors open you'll see that when we jump to the interior, they are pillarless which is very unusual in a car on this sort of platform but also the general DNA that comes from the Aventador it has things like the four-wheel drive system the anima control for various driving modes active torque vectoring four-wheel steering it has rear wheel steering as well which is unusual so although the wheelbase on this car is a little over three meters by turning the rear wheels up to three degrees plus or minus in either direction that means that the car will have more uh, capability and smaller turning circle at low speeds and more stability at high speeds when you get up to over 300 kilometers an hour so effectively it it shortens or lengthens the wheelbase by 60 centimeters, which obviously makes it a significantly easier car to handle than its 5.1 meter length would initially suggest. So I think if you come round back to the front and we talk more again about the styling side of this car, you'll notice features and cues that are traditional and familiar from Lamborghini the aggression, the lines, the shapes, the hexagonal shapes that you can see throughout the car, the six-sided, six-element styling, Sesto Elemento, you might remember. The use of lightweight materials, the car comes in at 2,200 kilograms. Now, it's an SUV, and being part of the VW group, obviously Lamborghini owned by Audi, means that they have access to platforms and technologies developed by the other brands. So this platform and chassis is shared with the Bentley Bentayga, the Audi Q7, the Porsche Cayenne, but that means Lamborghini can put their own touch on it and their own engine in here, a four litre bi-turbo V8, and make it into an absolute monster as well. In addition to that, it also has the 48 volt active roll stabilization system, along with adaptive air suspension, giving it all sorts of different modes. And it's sitting here in one of the lower modes. We'll talk about those different options when we jump in, but it means it can be dynamically capable when you're on the track, for example, or it can have off-road capability if you're in the right environments for that as well. From a design point of view, looking around the rear, you can see it has this very, very high rear uh, tail end at the back of the hatch and a sloping roof line, which give it almost coupe-like styling. It's done in Lamborghini's traditional way, two thirds, one third, keeping a high window line, which just makes it look a little bit sportier. If we come and talk about the engine, of course that is mounted in the front, different to the other Lamborghini models, but the 4.0-litre twin-turbocharged V8 is good for 650 horsepower, 850 newton meters, and you get peak torque from 2,250 RPM. So you'll get 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in this car in 3.6 seconds, 0 to 200 kilometers an hour is just 12.8. Those are very, very quick when you consider the weight and the size, and what that must feel like to drive 
drive in. So the engine is mated to an eight-speed automatic, but it also has the ability to split torque. So it's permanent all-wheel drive, split 40 to the front, 60 to the rear, but you can send up to 70% of that to the front at max, or you can send up to 87% at the rear. So that means these things are probably going to drive in quite an interesting way. Imagine it blasting across the dunes, but like I mentioned, also heading around the racetrack. Lots and lots of options and capability, especially if you have the off-road package, which introduces the extra driving modes. So let's come and jump onto the interior and have a better look in here for the moment. Um, you'll see the frameless windows that I've mentioned, which is very, very nice. Have a glimpse of this. So again, you'll see parts that are familiar from other models. I'll take a step in in a second. This car's fitted with the 21 speaker, 1,700 watt Bang & Olufsen sound system. You have various wheel, uh, sorry, seat configurations that you can have. We'll talk about the wheels actually quickly on the outside. 23 inch wheel optional on this car. It's standard with the 21, 22, or here with the 23. So very, very large wheels. Let's see what that does to the, the ride of the car when it's out on the road, but that's where the adaptive suspension comes in. So if we step in, and come and have a look inside the car. Right here in the middle is the Tamburo. This is the Anima Selector where you have your different driving modes. So you can see we have Strada, Sport, Corsa, traditional from the regular Lambos. In other manufacturers, you might expect to lose the most hardcore driving mode, which is Corsa for track, but here we have got it. So those will adjust the suspension height depending which mode you're in. Then you have Sabia, which is the sand mode, Terra for off-roading, Neve for snow. So different driving modes selected using the toggles that you have here, which is just a nice feel. And then you also, like the Aventador, have the Ego mode. So what we can do right now is flick the switch up and turn on the ignition. I'm glad they retained that. And you can see the displays coming to life. So the traditional full digital display for the driver dashboard cockpit that you can see with aggressive styling a la Hurricane and um, Aventador shows us his large rev counter in the center. Then you have another part here, the Lamborghini infotainment system, third generation with the dual screens. So the upper screen controls your main infotainment, for example, your navigation, your telephone, your media. But the lower screen allows you to set your air conditioning, climate controls, heated window, but also to type inputs to set the navigation, for example, to search around and to go through various different controls and modes. Here you can see the toggle for going through the different driving modes, which will adjust the display screen that we have in front of us. So there, in Sabia, look at the left, you can see relevant information for the mode that you're in. Going one further into Terra, um, has night vision and all sorts of other things in here as well. Um, Neve, you can see, again, similar information, just more details, just letting us know that I've left the door open, if we close that for the moment. Lots of carbon fiber trim in here. Um, seems strange to be sat in such a high up position. You can see the Bang & Olufsen tweeters that have risen out of the dashboard, but looking out of the front of the Lamborghini Urus. The roof line is quite low above my head, I will confess. You can sort of sense that there's not a huge amount of space in the current seating position, but that's what gives it the sporty appearance and characteristic. I mentioned the eight speed paddle shifts, uh, eight speed automatic gearbox control through the paddle shifts, again, configured bespokely for this car. You can see the other controls that we have, I should mention around um, down here, so your, your diff settings, uh, steering, suspension settings that you can change, the gear selector that moves over the top of here, park, manual gearbox should you prefer. Um, we've got the key right here, which is always nice. This is the Lamborghini Urus key, and because I've got the key, I can start this car up. So I'm going to open the door for this, just so I can point the camera towards the rear a little bit, and you can hear the noise as I flick this back up and fire the car into life. So let us do this quickly. And the V8 is in life. So I'm just gonna close the door again for a moment, actually, just so we have no messages in front of us. It might let us know that I'm not wearing my seatbelt, but this display, very clear and informative, lots of information to see up there. Steering wheel controls that we're familiar with, of course, uh, media, um, volume and things all around, going through the different displays, because you can, of course, change what you're looking at on the main uh, dashboard if you want. So you've got various screens that you can go through um, on this side, there we go, even bring the navigation up in there. And yeah, I think that's a good look at what we've got in the front. Let's switch it off for a moment. I'm gonna jump quickly to show you the back and I'll open the boot while we're here as well. So that button to open the powered tailgate. We'll get around there in a moment. Close the door. 
Back here, you've got over 600 litres of luggage space, 616 litres. If you fold down the 60, oh, sorry, 40, 20, 40 rear seats, you get up to a total of 1,596 litres of space. So this really is a Lamborghini with practical capabilities. That huge, huge boot in the back of it. So let's close that up. First drives of this car are going to be in the not too distant future, later this year. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it handles and what it looks like in the various different modes when you put it up, for example. So what else can I tell you that I haven't told you yet. Of course it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto becoming I guess more familiar in the industry. Engine for example has cylinder deactivation. There are all sorts of safety systems to ensure everything is well for the occupants of the car and the like and obviously pedestrians outside on the road as well. But looking at it it's definitely styled a la Lamborghini. It's what we expected them to make after they first introduced the concept a wee while ago now. But here it is. This is production Lamborghini Urus. It's a very exciting car and as you even come around here you can see the uh, ducts and vents that are around the car presented in the yellow that we're looking at it here. I have to say it looks very very nice so big thanks to them for allowing me the opportunity to come today and take a first look and walk around the car and show you some of the details and features. I think I need to say farewell to it for now. Make sure you guys are subscribed though there will be more coming with this car in future and I for one am very much looking forward to sharing those with you. That's it for now. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Lamborghini's Super Sport SUV. I will catch up with you guys though again very soon. Thanks as always. Cheers.